You're about to discover the 10 cruise rules that passengers break most often. I'm Gary Bemidge and this is another of my tips for travellers. I've done over 66 cruises and I'm trying to pack all the things that I've learned into every single video. There are quite a few rules that cruise lines have for passengers. I'm taking a look at the 10 that I've observed being broken more than any of the others. The first rule that gets broken is people lying on the health declaration form when they check in. When you check into a cruise, there is a little form that you normally have to fill in, which confirms that you haven't been suffering from stomach upsets, diarrhea, or vomiting in the last 24 or 48 hours. People who are perhaps suffering often will say they haven't because they're worried about the consequences. Will they be allowed on the cruise? Will they be confined to their cabin? There is a risk for other passengers because if you're suffering from those, you could be bringing on board the virus which will cause norovirus, which can often spread very quickly through a ship and take a lot of people down with them. So that is one rule that you often see people lying about because they worry about the consequences to their particular cruise, not always thinking about the consequences for the whole ship and other passengers on board. The next rule is sneaking alcohol on board. All cruise lines have restrictions and regulations around how much alcohol you can bring on board. And that is both for when you board, but also during the course of the cruise. So often they'll take excess alcohol away from you and they'll store it till the end of the cruise, even if you buy, say, duty-free alcohol on board. Now, a lot of passengers will break that rule and find ways of bringing it on board, either by trying to smuggle it in with very innovative and clever ways, or just simply ignoring the rule and chancing their arms. Buying drinks on board can be quite expensive. So that's a rule you'll often hear people talking about breaking and you'll find on many of the cruise forums, you'll find lots of tips and advice about how to sneak alcohol through. It's a very popular rule to break. The third rule, which is actually now quite difficult to break, is not attending the muster drill or the safety briefing. In recent years, the rules around attending that has increased significantly. And that's particularly after some big incidents and accidents. Most cruise lines will either take a register or they will actually scan your cruise card to make sure that you've gone. If you don't attend a muster station, you're very likely to find that you are refused to actually go on the cruise or you have to go to a separate briefing event. However, it used to be quite popular for that people try and skip it and still you'll find when you're on a cruise, they're often calling people's names because they haven't gone to the muster station. The next one is around dress codes. Some cruise lines have very strict rules around dress codes. So for example, if you go on a Cunard cruise, they have very strict formal nights or gala nights where you, if a gentleman have to wear a black suit and tie, or you have to wear a tuxedo and ladies wear equivalent in very glamorous gowns or very glamorous cocktail gowns, even on their less formal nights, gentlemen are required to wear a jacket, no tie. So they have a very strict rule. You'll find no matter which cruise you go on, there will be people breaking the dress code rule. I'm finding that as people start to ignore the dress code, the cruise lines though are not actually being that strict about enforcing it. So there will be certain cruise lines that are very picky. So for example, on a Cunard cruise or perhaps on a P&O cruise where they have much stricter dress codes, some of the cruise lines, they will turn a blind eye to it. So you're finding increasingly that dress code and ignoring the dress code rules is one thing that's becoming pretty widespread because the cruise lines are not actually enforcing it that much. The fifth rule is one that probably causes the most upsets and the most conflict, and that's around reserving seats. The two big problems here are around the pool and the pool deck, where people will basically dump stuff there to reserve a sunbed and then perhaps disappear for many hours. Most cruise lines have rules that say if your seat is unoccupied for 30 minutes, they will remove the stuff and let your sunbed that you've been reserving be taken by somebody else. However, again, the enforcement of those rules by the cruise lines is very, very patchy. So people have learned actually, if they reserve their sunbed, they're probably gonna have it all day. The second area where I see a lot of it happening is in the theaters where people will book a whole bunch of seats for their friends or family and wait for them to eventually come by again. That's an area with a lot of conflict. And you will find the cruise lines are always making announcements about not reserving seats. Reserving seats is certainly one of the most argued about and controversial, surprisingly, of all of the rules that passengers get really upset about. The next rule is also one that probably causes some upset, and this is smoking or vaping 
on people's balconies. Most of the cruise lines don't allow you to smoke or vape on your balcony. A lot of people will still go out on the balcony and smoke because their view is actually, particularly if you're at sea, so what, the smoke is gonna dissipate. However, it is a very strict rule and the cruise lines are more likely to enforce it if people do report you smoking on your balcony. It's very unusual for people to break the rule about smoking in their cabins because they will get hit with a cleaning fee if they do so. A lot of people who vape often ignore the smoking rules. Certainly on the cruise lines I've been on, Recently, they have the same rules for smoking as they do have for vaping. Another bunch of rules that I see being broken a lot and I see a lot of discussion around that is the rules around use of the pools and the hot tubs. Most cruise lines have a lot of rules and regulations because very few of the cruise lines, certainly at the time of recording, have lifeguards around the pool. A few of the more family oriented cruise lines are introducing lifeguards. So for example, MSC Cruises, so they do have a lot of rules around safety and running and diving around the pool because you know, the pools are quite small. But a lot of them also have less formal rules or restrictions around which pools are allocated for adults only and which are for kids. Or at certain times of day, kids are allowed to use the pool but only at very restricted times. You can be in a hot tub at what time, the age of people in the hot tub. I found, generally speaking, often those rules get broken and they get ignored by passengers. And again, what's interesting is the cruise lines are not that good at enforcing that, maybe because the crew are worried they're gonna get a lot of pushback. Now, the next one, we've all seen people do it and I've been as guilty of doing it as everybody else. And this is around taking food off the ship. In some countries, you are absolutely, by local regulations, not allowed to take food from the ship onto land. And often the cruise lines will stress that you must not take any form of food on, although it often is more applicable to things like fruit, nuts, those kind of more agricultural type things. We've all done it though, we're out for a long day on an excursion and we think at breakfast, we'll pack a couple of pastries or some rolls or some cheese or whatever. However, it could have some big penalties because there are some parts of the world and some parts that I've been to where they will actually do checks. They'll have you know, sniffer dogs or whatever to check that you're not taking product and produce onto land. But it's one that certainly you see being broken quite a lot. The next one is one that probably does frustrate me a little bit when it comes to rule breaking. And this is around the meetup time for excursions or if you've been out on an excursion, the time to get back to the bus or the meetup point. And people will just ignore that because they know, generally speaking, that once you're on an excursion, you're not likely to be left behind. The danger with that, of course, and the thing that's frustrating is it means if you go on an excursion, it's always gonna be held up by the people who decide to come last. And often it's the same people because they know the guide isn't gonna leave without them. Everyone's gonna wait until they are back. So they'll appear back at the meetup time, 10, 15, or sometimes even longer than that. Also, you know, when you're checking for excursions in the, in the morning, you'll find you're waiting because they're waiting for a few people to arrive to get the full number that, of tickets that have been sold before you depart. The pace of excursions and the timing of excursions is always gonna be defined by whoever's the slowest and the last. So breaking that rule might get you a little bit of extra time, but it's not really great for the other people who are on that excursion. The next rule is really a set of rules. And these are ones that can have really, really serious consequences. So whilst the other rules are perhaps a little bit frustrating, a little bit annoying, they don't necessarily have dramatic and terrible consequences for passengers. So for example, the rule about do not sit on the railings, whether it's on the balcony or the ship. The way that people have fallen off a ship is when they're larking around, messing around, climbing on the railings of balconies, perhaps climbing up on the balcony, railing to go from one cabin to the next, and people have either fallen onto the quay side, the dock side, or they've fallen off the ship man overboard. Another really important rule is about fraternizing with the crew, particularly going to crew areas. The crew member could find themselves fired and you could find yourself disembarked off the ship. There's very strict rules around passengers not going into crew areas. And of course, then there's the one around just treating people with respect. If you damage property, if you have a punch-up fight with someone, you're also very likely to find yourself disembarked at the next port at your own cost. So there's a bunch of rules there that are probably much more fundamental. People know that if you do things that are fundamentally illegal, there are big consequences. If you found this interesting and helpful, why don't you watch many more of my Tips for Travelers videos. They're packed full of tips, advice to help you make the most of your precious travel time and money.